Um, I'm not sure I introduced myself before I started, but I'll introduce myself. I'm Blossom Oyem. For those that don't know me, I'm a software developer, and um, I've, by my course in staying here, I've developed so many projects by the grace of God. So I'm going to talk about Adrono and robotics. I know most of us, we've not heard about Adrono, but I'm going to talk about it today. Okay, we're going to look at the introduction. Starting from microcontroller. A microcontroller, as the name implies, is a microcomputer that has its own CPU, it has its own RAM, and it also has its own user interface. And is you can use it for any control purposes. We have some famous microcontroller which are listed here. We have the Intel. We have the microchip and the ATEM. Then the next we're going to look at what is Adrono. Adrono is a microcontroller board that contains an onboard power. It also uses a USB cable connected to your system and you can communicate it communicate to the board using your system. It has a chip on the board that you can upload your program, whatever program you do, using either Scratch interface or the ID interface of the Adrono. It helps you to, the purpose of Adrono, it helps to create any object and it helps to supply the object. The object can be either in a robotics form or any thing that you want to design. From, from this um, next slide, we have different type of Adreno board. We have the Uno, the Mega, the Lilypad, the Adreno BC, Adreno Nano, and Adreno Mini. But the one that I'm going to talk about is the Adreno Uno. The Adreno Uno, most of these um, segment interfaces on, on, is on all boards. But I'm just going to explain what it's all about. On the Adreno Uno, you know, we have a digital, digital output to output anything from the board. Whatever you send to the board, it outputs it from this part of the segment. Then we have the analog input. We, you input to the board, and whatever input, it displays in an output environment. Then we have our microcontroller. For this board, the type of chip is an ATEM microcontroller. Any other, if you look at the Adreno board from the little example I did, most of the, uh, the chip's names are on the board. Then we have a USB port that you connect to your system, then a power output. Then we're going to look at a little on Adreno coding. The Adreno coding is not actually difficult. What 
the the purpose of this adreno is that whatever you write on your interface you connect the system to the board whatever control you want if you want to create a movie and or you want to create a you want you have a robot and you want to ask the robot to prepare something for you you can write the code upload the code connected this uh, and connect connected to your system upload it to your bo your board then the board we just go ahead and start doing whatever you want it to do. So now we're going to look at the adrenal coding. The adrenal coding is not difficult. It's just easy to understand. We are going to look at data types and operator. What data types means is what you define a types, a, a data, the type of a particular data. On this place, we're going to look at just integer, character, long, and floating point. As the name is integer, it's just numbers. Then character is just string of string of char either one character or various characters. Then long is referred to as numbers, but a longer version of integer. Then when you're looking at float, float is decimal. Then for statement and operator, we have if you're writing a, some, a just statement, just like in English, if you're writing a simple statement, you can write a statement in your coding environment. Then we have some little operators that you guys should just have a little understanding. If you're looking at increment, it's plus plus and decrement. These are the various compound operator that you use if you want to do some adding, moving, subtracting, and division. These are just a little uh, compass statement. Then we also have conditional statement. When you're looking at conditional statement, now for example, let me give an example of a conditional statement. Like in the last coding, I always make use of just one example. And that example is the process of making T. Now we have a process. The process of making tea, uh, tea and sandwich is a problem to some people. But if you want to go through the process of doing it, you have various, we have various um, um, process we, you have to go through in order for you to arrive at a delicious tea and sandwich. So if you are going doing a, for example, now you want to prepare your tea. If the tea is hot, what will you do? You add cold water. If it's too cold, what will you do? You add hot water. That's what we refer to as conditional statement. So in coding, we have various conditional statement that you have to follow. Like for this first conditional statement, if condition, what will you do? So when you are writing your coding and you want, for example, now you, you have your object and the object comes and it picks this cup. Once the robots pick the cup and the cup is solved, what will the robots do? It will drop it. What we are trying to explain is how to make a robot to behave or to mimic human environment. Then we have other conditional statements. We have various type of conditional statements. We have switch. It's the same, the same thing. If there's something, what do you want it to do? Then the next, we have some do loop statements and so on and so forth. Then we are going to look at the structure of our code. In, if you open the environment, the environment has just these two, our void and our loop. The void in this place is used for you to just say the problem, what you want it to do, the initial statement. Then the void loop is just writing how do you want it to do. Like for example, now let me go back to that my example, a uh, problem. I have a problem. I don't know how to prepare sandwich and tea. What will I do? I'll put that problem in this place. Now, the process of making it in this place, I'll first of all get, for example, I want to use uh, lawyer milk over tea and tea. I will declare them here on this my setup. I will declare my lawyer milk. I will declare all the things I need in preparing my sandwich and tea there. Then on the void loop, this is where I will write how I want the program to run. By the time I'm done writing the program, I will upload it because on the interface will allow me to upload what I've written to my 
adrenal board because the adrenal board they actually did it in a way that when you upload the project to it the project whatever you've done it will start behaving in that environment and i will come to this so okay this is actually i actually did something i think i will need my system here please nelly so this is actually a small um project by the time i'm done i will explain how it is from here i don't know if you guys can see i don't want to scatter this from here you can see a small board it's actually called an adrenal board the board is designed for you to hold your program the way they did it when you're done with writing your program using their interface let me take you to the interface this is how the interface look like i i'm not sure it's on the system this is how the interface is look like looks like you will install download it because it's open source you will download it to your environment whatever uh, program you want to do if you want to write a rope a, a control on moving forward you can write your code on our void loop then by the time you are true you upload the code to your board and the board will start behaving whatever thing you've done it or whatever thing you've programmed it to do so that is just like a small robotics now that will lead, take us to the next um aspect of robotics these are what children are designing this is a maze environment they actually made use of carbon paper some of the tools in that you, when you buy the adrenal board there are some things they will give to you for the starter kit they will give you one one component because you are a starter but when you buy advanced things they can add like two or more so this is what somebody did the board is actually inside here he has written a program on how a ball will move in a maze environment and the person has uploaded the program from the system to the board so when you click on this joystick this is like a small mouse when you click on the joystick the maze environment will just move and as it's moving it will be moving based on there's a ball inside the maze environment this is like another a robotic hand this too somebody actually did it too and from this place where my pointer is that is where the board is so they will upload the pro program to the board then whatever program you ask the hand to do if you want the hand to just be moving up and down the hand will be moving up and down if you want the hand to be turning angle 90 or angle 360 the hand will be moving based on the code you've written it to do now this thing we, we are talking about the hard code i actually talk about scratch on the scratch environment it has hard extension on the ad extension if you click on the ad extension there's a part for legal coding it will allow you to do more uh, movement on motion and sensor what do i mean by motion motion has to do with movement so whatever thing you do on the scratch drag and block drag and block by the time you upload it to your board whatever you ask it to do the board will be doing it anyhow environment you are doing then this is also a car this is constructed car but the board is inside it and also for this we a uh, small car you can see on top of it is board the adrenal board is on top of it so they've programmed this and there's a sensor in front of this board so they've written a program that whenever it sees anything i can move in that direction so now what is robotics i'll be talking about robotics what is robotics i will ask question based on what i've explained so far can anybody tell me what robotics is all about i actually talked about adreno the invention of adreno and what people are using it to do any idea on what is robotics okay somebody wants to try um it's a technology that deals with making a machine or devices to behave like human I said robotic has to is uh, a technology that deals with making machines or devices to behave like humans. Yes. 
making um, machine or devices to behave like a human. That is it. From our def definition here, a robot is a, actually a branch of technology that is designed to operate like human or to mimic human environment. That is what robotics is all about. So we can actually create anything to any control or any robot to do anything in any environment. So now we can have some uses of robotics. Robotics is actually used in various segments. It's actually used in agriculture. It's actually used in automobile construction. You can see the listing of where robotics is used. Then we are going to. I'm going to ask a question. Who can build or code anything? Anybody can. If you set your mind on it, you can build or code anything. And from our example, we have just two people that actually started. The first person name is called Sarah Semaya Meta. She's actually from India. She started coding at the age of six. And now she's 10. She's the CEO of Coda Bunnies. She created something and people are actually I want her to work for her. She even got an offer from Microsoft and she rejected their offer. She rejected that offer because they saw what she was making and the money she was making to her family. But she said she's not going to work for Microsoft. She's 10 years old. She's a CEO of Coda Bodies. And she also do workshop teaching children on how to code. Then we also have from a somebody named Emanuela Ozifo. This person is not far, it's from Lagos. I don't know how old she started coding, but at the age of nine, she has designed her own mobile or web application at the age of nine. That's why last year, we decided to start from the younger generation. Somebody has a weakness. We started from five years. She brought her two kids, and they designed something cool. Started from four years to 18 on designing something. So we're going to look at some video clip of these two people on our next slide. In 2016, I got a letter from Michelle Obama, and she just told me how my initiative, Girls Do Code, was amazing. She just told me that to keep working harder and that I'm an inspiration to all. <music> My name is Samaya Metha, I'm 10 years old, and I love to code. I created Coder Bunnies and Coder Minds. Coder Bunnies is the most comprehensive coding board game ever, and Coder Minds is a coding-based artificial intelligence board game. I was six years old when I first started coding, and I was about six and a half, maybe seven years old, when um, I first got the idea of Coder Bunnies. So Coder Bunnies, it will basically teach you all the concepts you ever need in computer programming. There's like the very basic concepts like sequencing and conditionals to more advanced concepts like loops, functions, stack, queue, lists, parallelism, inheritance, and many others. And I would say that Coder Bunnies teaches code in a fun farmyard adventure. You basically do actions and you use your cards or code cards to help your bunny eat its colored carrot and then reach the destination. So there's um, different ways of teaching various concepts. Once they're really excited about the game, then they actually learn coding without even knowing it. I am really passionate about coding. I want the kids to be the same way because coding is the future and coding is what the world will depend on in the next 10 to 15 years. So um, if kids learn to code now, that when they grow up, they can think of coding maybe as a career option. I actually got introduced to code, uh, to artificial intelligence because of my dad. He actually works in the artificial intelligence field. So Coder Minds teaches um, many major artificial intelligence concepts, five in particular, and it also teaches a few coding concepts as well. And it particularly teaches uh, Java programming, which is one of the major coding concepts. So I started selling the game. It was first available on my website, and it was actually started, it was stored right here in my garage. Um, and we used to pack every order we got. And when it started building up and we started getting more orders, we were not able to fulfill that many. 
So we were seeing if we could get it on Amazon. And luckily, within almost just the first year, we got it on Amazon. My family is very much involved in my business. Uh, my mom, my dad, my brother, we all have positions at the company. So right now, with that money, is kind of going back into fulfilling more orders and making more Color Bunnies boxes. But I'm also um, saving a little bit of the money for my college education. And I'm also using it a little bit to give back. Particularly, I started working with a few organizations that help the homeless. And so I'm starting to give back to them, too. So I've done workshops at uh, places like Google, Microsoft, I've done it at Intel. So when I went to Google for Take Your Child to Work Day, I did two back-to-back -back workshops at Google headquarters, and then I got to meet the chief cultural officer of Google. She inspired me to work harder, and it was just a great moment in my life. So Girls Who Code is an initiative I started that basically teaches underprivileged girls how to code, or just girls overall how to code. And I do that by doing workshops in various places, but I do majorly girls only workshops, and that kind of bring girls together and teach them how to code, so that when they grow up, they can think of coding as a career option. And my goal is to just bring girls back into this field where there's a big gender gap. I want to inspire more girls to get into the coding, computer science, and technology field. My dream job is being an entrepreneur, and I would say I already have it now because I am an entrepreneur, but I want to expand on that, and I want to become an entrepreneur that helps people and does good for the community. So you can see at the age of 10, she's already making her own money and she's selling. So if you imagine a child starting, <laughs> and she's running charity. Yes, so you can at 10, and she started when she was six. So you imagine if a child started coding from when that person is young, the sky is her limit. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, she's going to places. I said, I read, when I read that, and uh, she said from a, a blog, yes, a woman's man sent me, but there's a blog I read that um, when uh, Microsoft saw what she was making, they gave her an offer and she rejected it. Google gave her an offer and she rejected the offer because definitely the money will not go for charity work. And it won't go for making of more coder but it will go to Microsoft. So now let's look at somebody from Nigeria that started coding. I don't know when she started coding, but at the age of nine, she was able to design her own mobile application. Let's watch her. Attributing what she termed milestone achievements in life to hard work, discipline, and self-determination, the young website designer who is streamed in advanced PowerPoints, advanced Excel, CorelDRAW, and Adobe PageMaker, Emanuela Uziofu said she drew inspiration from world record breakers such as Dimitris Hatsis, a 15-year-old great teenager who built a 3D printed life functional robot. I also like using my laptop to start creating websites and not only websites, do other designs on my laptop and write something. Not like some other kids which will sit down and start watching cartoons but I really want to tell those kids to stop that and start facing their books and start reading. Emanuela Oziofu says when given an opportunity she would contribute positively to the state government's ICT sector. I would like to make my state proud and my country proud too. So I will also write about my state, how the good works that the state has done in Nigeria and make a website for the state which also tells the good works 
state has done. Nancy Osamudiame, who is a website designing instructor, speaks further. The first time I actually met in Manila, I never thought she could learn as fast as she did. During the process of learning, she went online, she did a lot of researches, and when she came back and I was like, I was wow with what she did. And that compelled me to teach her the more. The diverse academic knowledge of the grade 5 people of 14 school in Benin came to bear during a visit to her school, where NTN camera lens captured her teaching some of her classmates. She's very helpful, so nice. Anytime I'm having a problem, she helps me. Manuela likes a quiet environment and she also likes being attentive in class. She's very intelligent, very smart, she does not play rough like others. Attesting to her class performance, the school headmistress Oboagu Uju and her teacher Priscilla Ibobo said Emanuela is a smart girl. Academically, she is above an above average child. Emanuela is a child that every parent will want their children to imitate. She's a gifted child and she's developing the gifts that God has deposited in her. Nyog Emanuela Uziofu, who was born nine years ago, enrolled at a computer institute of technology in Benin, where she obtained a certificate in basic training with specialization in Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoints. Her designed websites, www.superhealthyfoods.com, would be launched later this year. In Benin, Jude Agweke, NT. Clap. Let's clap. <laughs> Let's clap. She actually she designed her own. She has so many certificates in Word, Excel, graphics. She went to NIT. She got a certificate in web design. She went to MIT. She got a certificate online. And she has so many certificates from Solo Lane. And from those certificates, she used that to design her own website at the age of nine years from Lagos. In, okay, Benin. Okay, Benin. Okay, that's, I believe that was a mistake. I thought it was from Lagos. The article I saw online was from Lagos. That means she's, yeah. Okay. So now, I'm going to actually show you a little thing I actually designed. I call that a movement several. I don't know if you guys can see from there. But what I did, I wrote a little program on my Adreno interface. Okay, I wrote a little program on... Okay. Okay, without wasting much time, like I was, I talked about the interface. The interface, this is where you actually do your code. Sorry? Projector. No, I didn't move this there because of this. I just want to show you people something. From the interface, I actually wrote a little code and I call it water sensor. This is my water sensor is on. Once there's an indication of water, my server will rotate. It will rotate. Then if the water sensor is dry, it will stop rotating. What I did, by the time I'm through, by, by the time I was through with the code, I connected, like I talked about the Adreno board, connected to your system, co com your computer. So I uploaded the code. The code is already here, but I'm just showing you the interface. The code is already on the board. And now I'm going to connect a little water to my water sensor. So once there's a presence of water, this server will rotate. Now once I dry it, it will stop rotating. That stop rotating. That is just a little thing. So you can actually, we can go back to us, you can actually do anything either using this uh, uh, interface. We have so many interface. For the advanced that are doing hard code, you can use this interface. The, the programming language here is actually C, 
plus plus. But for the younger generation, the younger kids will make use of something like Scratch, a block interface. So they will just drag that block, whatever they want to do, they will do it on the interface, then upload it to the board. So you can actually construct anything. By the time you do, you just mount your Adreno board on that device, and the device will mimic the environment you want it to do. If you want to design a moving robotics, by the time you are through, you've uploaded your code to this board and you mount the code because the board already has an onboard um, power. So it will move based on the code you have written on your interface. So that is all I have to say. Thank you very much Attribute, for attributing what you think. And I can show you a little um, video program that somebody did just for entertainment.